Even though The Division 2 is set to release in five months, agents are still actively participating and playing The Division and are eagerly seeking a new meta or gear set to configure. Now for the player that craves solo gameplay, there are plenty of options including the build guide that I now present to you. Now without question, the gear set I received the most inquiries about in terms of how it functions is Alpha Bridge, and that is the gear set I want to show you how to build. What's going on, agents? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer reporting back for Build Guide Duty. And I know I've been away from YouTube for far too long, but in my absence, I have not been neglecting the division. Instead, I have been focusing my attention on my Twitch streams with a heavy emphasis on my favorite title, and that is the motivation for this build guide. So without wasting any further time, let's jump right in. Alpha Bridge made its debut back in Update 1.3 with a much different look than now, but the basic premise still remains the same, of bonus health regeneration, small increases in weapon damage, and the ability to stack more than three weapon talents onto your primary weapon, dependent on the fact that both your primary and secondary weapon are from the same archetype of weaponry. Now, in addition, all requirements for main stats are ignored, and weapon talents are instantly activated regardless of your agent's stats. So now, let me show you how I crafted this six-piece classified alpha bridge build for PvE. First up is the chest piece, rolled in firearms along with skill haste, enemy armor damage, and ammo capacity. 9% skill haste is the maximum percentage available on gear, and since this build is for PvE, any chunk of EAD over 4% that we can stack onto our gear is a wise choice. Next is the mask, once again rolled for firearms along with 8% enemy armor damage and 12% damage to elites. Now you will see this theme throughout the build of more EAD and DTE whenever we can get them. I rolled the knee pads for stamina along with 9% critical hit damage and 16% damage to elites. Enemy armor damage is available on the knee pads at a maximum roll of just 4% and you could go with this selection but I have chosen the crit hit damage and you will see why later on in this build guide. For the backpack, I have chosen electronics as the main stat along with another 9% critical hit damage roll and additional ammo capacity. The gloves only come with three major attributes, and I have chosen 12% assault rifle damage, 17% critical hit damage, and 8% enemy armor damage. For PvE, I would say to stick with the assault rifle damage and enemy armor damage, but you could substitute something instead of the critical hit damage, like skill haste or critical hit chance, depending on your needs. The holster comes with all three main stats, and for the major attribute, I have chosen 7% skill haste. Critical hit chance and health both roll on the holster in lesser amounts than other gear, and if you want something besides skill haste, the other option would be for reload speed, but I prefer the extra haste. For the gear mods, I have chosen to equip superior electronics mods with 4% damage to elites. For PvE, equipping superior mods with damage to elites is always a wise choice. If you do want to know where to purchase these mods, I will include a link in the video description to Ruben Alamena's weekly vendor reset for the division. Check the reset every Friday to see if the necessary mods you seek are for sale and purchase them at the correct safe house or DZ checkpoint for credits. Since I am crafting this alpha bridge build around crit damage, enemy armor damage, and damage to elites, I have chosen to equip four 2% pulse critical hit chance mods to this build, and you will see just how effective these crit hit chance mods are when used in conjunction with the pulse skill. The lightweight M4 pairs perfectly with this build concept, as once fully optimized, it will add a massive 24% enemy armor damage to our totals. For my weapon talents, I have crafted this M4 to have destructive, predatory, and ferocious. And the only talent that may have some flexibility could be predatory, depending on how well you can sustain your health in combat. Destructive adds an additional 15% enemy armor damage, and ferocious gives us a constant percentage of 10% to our damage to elites numbers. 
my second M4 is simply there to add the third, or free talent to my primary M4, and the talent I have chosen for this additional weapon talent is Determined. Now I have also experimented with many different talents, and the only other talents I may recommend would be Deadly, Responsive, or Competent. However, since I am trying for a strong pulse with a short cooldown, the additional skill haste cooldown of 7.5% is nice to have. For the mods on my M4, I have chosen an Omega Rifle Suppressor with headshot damage, critical hit damage, and critical hit chance, a small grip with critical hit damage, optimal range, and stability, an extended mag with critical hit chance and rate of fire, and a C79 scope with critical hit damage, headshot damage, and critical hit chance. You could add something like the loud vent break in place of the suppressor for even more crit hit damage over headshot damage, but these damage types are in the same category, and it really comes down to six of one and a half dozen of the other. Once you have assembled your gear set, equipped your mods, and optimized your gear, you should be sitting at just over 5,000 for all three main stats of firearms, stamina, and electronics, and this is crucial for this build as it directly affects the six-piece bonus. When all your main stats are evenly balanced, the rotating signature skills will activate for the maximum time of 10 seconds, and these truly help the solo PvE player to achieve incredible levels of DPS, tankiness, and damage resiliency. For my skills, I have equipped the Recon Pulse Pack and the Booster Shot Self Heal. Talents are On the Move, Precision, One is None, and Strike Back. Once fully assembled, you should be somewhere around 100% critical hit damage, 100% headshot damage, 57% damage to elites, 61% enemy armor damage, 125% health regeneration without predatory proccing, and 15% additional weapon damage through the 3 and 5 piece bonuses. The idea is to use this build in solo PvE gameplay as you will need to gain quick kills to cycle through the rotating signature skills. If you are not the player who deals the killing blow on the target, you will not gain the necessary activation on your signature skills, and it renders a huge portion of this build as completely useless. I will end this build guide with me running through Lexington Event Center on Challenge Difficulty Solo to show you just how effective this build can be. And as always, I look forward to reading your thoughts and comments on my latest build guide, and if you could take the time to rate the video, it would be greatly appreciated. If you want some more Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer in your lives, make sure to pound that sub button and configure and save to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter, and look for me on Twitch with weekly Division streams. Until my next The Division build guide, this has been Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer saying peace out. This is about taking the Rikers out at the knees. There's no one who can replace Lorraine Barrett. She's the one who organized the escape to Manhattan. There are only three of my people there. If you can get them out before you can win, I'd be great. All right. Get them out first, but don't jeopardize the mission. We're going in on your heels. The jailbreak ends here. Hostiles and bad.
Active Echo Beacon detected. safe area. Agent, the hostage is being held on the roof. You need to clear it out. You are now leaving the safe area. the rescue. Well, a dead man there. Negative, Ramos. We've got this. Find a secure position and hunker down. And that's in order, Sergeant. Warning. Incoming hostiles detected. here. I just heard about Ramos, Captain. Glad we reached him in time. Thanks for that. My people are getting into position to breach the hall. Agent, you're gonna want to unlock the maintenance access. The building blueprints show a security control room down in the basement. safe area. Warning. Now we're exiting the safe area. So far, so good. My strike squads are moving in. 
They'll breach the main hall on your signal. Impressed, Agent. Tricky assignment, but you did what had to be done. Yeah, you broke your spine, kid. With the leader dead, the rest are gonna scatter. I don't think we're quite done with them yet, but at least now we can get these JTF folks back on the job. Oh, yeah. I need my people alive and out there fighting the good fight. God knows we can't afford to lose any more personnel. I owe you, Agent. Hell of a job.